Frost Bite Chapter 18 The high heels were starting to hurt me, so I took them off when I went back inside, walking barefoot through the lodge. I had not been to Manson's room, but I remembered him mentioning the number once, and I found it without difficulty. Shan, Manson's roommate, opened the door a few moments after I knocked. Hey, Rose. He stepped aside for me, and I walked in, peering around. Some informal was playing on the TV. One downside of a non-natural life was a shortage of good programming, and empty soda cans covered nearly every flat surface. There was no sign of Manson anywhere. Where is he? I asked. Shan stifled a yawn. I thought he was with you. I have not seen him all day. He yawned again, then frowned and thought. He was throwing some stuff in the back earlier. I figured you guys were running off for some crazy romantic gateway, picnic or something. Hey, nice dress. Oh, um, thanks. I murmured, feeling a frown on my own coming on. Packing up back? They don't make any sense. There was nowhere to go. There was no way to go either. This resort wasn't tightly guarded as the academic. Lisa and had only managed to break out of the place with compulsion and it had still been a pain in the ass. Yet, why on earth could Manson pack a bag if he was not leaving? I asked Shan a few more questions and decided to follow up on the possibility, crazy as it seems. I found the guardian in the charge of security and scheduling. He gave me the names of the guardians who could be on duty around the resort's border when Manson had last been seen. Most of the names I know and most were off-duty now, making them easy to find. Unfortunately, the first couple has not been, has not seen Manson around today. When they asked why I wanted to know, I gave a vaguer answer and hurried off. The third person on my list was a guy named Alan, a guardian who usually worked the academic's lower campus. He was just coming in after skying, taking his equipment off near the door. Recognizing me, he smiled as I approached. Sure, I saw him, he said, bending down to his boots. Relief floated over me until then I had not realized how worried I could be. Do you know where he is? No. Uh, let him and eat Castle and what's her name? The Ranaldi girl out the north gate and don't sneak them after that. I started. Alan continued unhooking his skies as though we were discussing slope conditions. You let Manson and eat and Mia. Ouch. Yeah. Uh, why? He finished and looked back up at me. A kind of happy and amused look on his face. Because they asked me. An icy feeling started creeping through me. I found out which guardian had watched the north gate with Alan and immediately sought him out. The guardian gave me the same response. He could let Manson eat and meow, no question asked. Unlike Alan, he don't seem to think there was anything wrong with that. He appeared almost dazed. It was a look I could see seen before, a look that came over people when Lisa used compulsion. In particular, I could see it happen when Lisa don't want people to remember something very well. She could bury the memory in them, either erasing it altogether or planting it for later. She was so good at compulsion though, that she could just make people forget completely. For them to still have some memories meant someone who was not as good at compulsion had worked on them. Someone, say, like Mia. I was not that fainting type, but for just a moment, I felt like I could keel over. The world spun. I closed my eyes and took a deep breath. When I could see again, my surroundings stayed stable. Okay, no problem. I could reason this out. Manson, Eve, and Mia had left the resort earlier today. Not only that, they had done it by using compulsion, which was utterly forbidden. They had not told anyone they could left through the north gate. I could see in a map of the resort. The north gate guarded a driveway that connected to the only semi-major road in the area, a small highway that led to the little town about 12 miles away. The town Manson had mentioned that had buses to Spokane, Spokane, 
where this travel pack of Srigoy and their humans might be living. Spokane, where Manson could fulfill all his crazy dreams of slaying Srigoy. Spokane, which he only knew about because of me. No, no, no. I murmured to myself, almost running towards my room. There, I stripped off the dress and changed into heavy winter clothes, boots, jeans and sweater. Grabbing my coat and gloves, I hurried back towards the door and then passed. I was acting without thinking. What was I actually going to do? I needed to tell someone, obviously. But that could get the trio in a lot of trouble. I could also tip, dream it off that I could go on and gossip about the Spokane Strigoi information he could tell me in confidence as a sign of respecting my maturity. I studied the time. I could take the while for anyone around the resort to know we were missing. If I could actually get out of the resort a few minutes later, I found myself knocking on Kristen's door. He answered, looking sleepy and clinical as usual. If you have come to apologize for her, he told me loftily, you can just go ahead and... Oh, shut up. I snapped. This is not about you. Hastily, I relied the details of what was going on. Even Christian don't have a witty response for that one. So, Manson, Eve and Mia went to Spokane to hunt Strigoi? Yes. Holy shit, why don't you go with them? Seems like something you could do. I restrained the urge to smack him. Because I'm not in sense. But I'm going to get them before they are doing something even stupider. That was when Christian caught on. And what do you need from me? I need to get off the resort property. They got Mia to use compulsion on the guards. I need you to do the same thing. I know you have practiced it. I have. He agreed. But, well, for the first time ever, he looked embarrassed. I'm not very good at it. And doing it on Dampiers is nearly impossible. Lisa is a hundred times better than me. Or probably any moroi. I know, but I don't want her to get in trouble. He snorted. But you don't mind if I do. I searched. Not really. You are a piece of work, you know that? Uh, yeah, I do actually. So five minutes later, he and I found ourselves trekking out to the north gate. The sun was coming up, so most everyone was inside. This was a good thing and I hope it could make our escape that much easier. Stupid, stupid, I kept thinking. This was going to blow up in our faces. Why had Manson done this? I know he could done this whole crazier villain attitude and he could certainly seem upset that the guardians had not done anything about the recent attack. But still, was he really that unhind? He had to know how dangerous this was. Was it possible? Was it possible I could upset him so much with the making out disaster that he could gone off the deep end? Even enough to go to this and get Mia and it to join him? Not that those two who be hard to convince. He could follow Manson anywhere and Mia was almost as gang haunts so Manson to kill every Strigoi in the world. Yet out of all questions I had about this one thing was definitely clear. I had told Manson about the Strigoi in Spokane, hands down, this was my fault. And without me, none of this could have happened. Lisa always makes eye contact. I coached Christian as we approached the exit and speaks in really light, calm voice. I don't know what else. I mean, she concentrates a lot too. So try that. Focus on forcing your will on them. I know. He snapped. I have seen her do it. Fine. I snapped back just trying to help squirting i saw the only one guardian stood at the gate a total stock of luck there were in between shift with the sun out the risk of strigoi had disappeared the guardians could still continue in their duties but they could relax just a bit the guy on the duty don't seem particularly alarmed by our appearance why do you kids what are your kids doing out here christian swallowed i could see the lines of tension on his face you're going to let us out of the gate, he said. 
a note of nervousness made his voice tremble but otherwise he did a far approximate of lisa's smoothing tones unfortunately it had no effect on the guardian as christian has pointed out using compulsion on a guardian was nearly impossible me had gotten lucky the guardian grinned at us what he asked clearly amused christian tried again you're going to let us out the guy smiles flatter just a little and i saw him blink in surprise his eyes don't glaze over in the same way lisa's victims did but christian had done enough to briefly enthrall him unfortunately i could tell right then and there that it could not be enough to make him let us go out and forget fortunately i could been trying to compel people without the use of magic sitting near his post was an enormous magelty two feet long and easy seven pounds i grabbed the magelty and clocked him on the back of the head he grunted and crumpled to the ground he barely see me coming and despite the hormones of what i could just done i kind of wished one of my instructors have been there to grade me on such a awesome performance jesus christ exclaimed christian you just assaulted a guardian yeah so much for getting the guys back without getting anyone in trouble i don't know just how much you sucked at compulsion i could deal with the fo- fall out later thanks for your help you should head back before the next shift comes on he shook his head and grimaced no i'm going with you on this no i argued i only need you to get through the gate you don't have to get in trouble over this i'm already in trouble he pointed at the guardian he saw my face i screwed either way so i might as well help you save the day stop being a bitch for a change we hurried off and i cast one last guilty glance at the guardian i was pretty sure i don't hit him hard enough to cause real damage and with the sun coming out he could not freeze or anything after about 5 minutes of walking down the hallway i know we had a problem despite being covered and wearing sunglasses the sun was taking a toll on christian it was slowing us down and it could not take that long for someone to find the guardian i could have taken out and come after us a car not one of the academics appeared behind us and i made a decision i don't approve of attacking in the least even someone like me know how dangerous it was but we needed to get to town fast and i prayed christian and i could take down any creepy stalker guy who tried to mess with us Fortunately when the car pulled over it was just a middle aged couple who looked more concentrate than anything else you kids okay i jerked my thumb behind me our car slid off the road can you take us to the town so i can call my dad it worked 15 minutes later they dropped off us at a gas station i actually had trouble getting rid of them because they wanted to help us so much finally we convinced them we could be fine and we walked the few blocks over to the bus station as i suspected this town was not much of a hub or for real travel three lines serviced the town two that went to the other sky resorts and one that went to lobstown rough from lobstown you could go on the other places i could half hope that we might beat manson and the other before the sun come then we could have hauled them back without any trouble unfortunately there was no sign of them the cherry woman at the counter knew exactly who we were talking about too she confirmed that three of them had bought tickets to spokane by the way of lobstone damn it i said the woman raised her eyebrow at my language i don't to christian you got money for the bus Christian and I don't talk much along the way. Expect for me to tell him he could be an idiot about Lisa and Adrian. By the time we reached Lobstown, I finally had him convinced, which was a minor miracle. He slept the rest of the way to Spokane, but I could not. I just kept thinking over and over that this was my fault. It was late afternoon by the time we reached Spokane. It looked a few people but we finally found someone who knew the shopping center drummond had mentioned it was a long ways from the bus station but it was walkable my legs were stiff after almost 5 hours of riding a bus and i wanted the moment the sun was a while from sitting but 
it was lower and less determinable to vampires so christian don't mind the walk either and so often happened when i was on calm sittings i felt a tug into lisa head i let myself fall into her because i wanted to know what was happening back at the resort i know you want to protect them but we need to know where they are lisa sat on the bed in our room while dremit and my mom started at her down it was dremit who had spoken seeing him through her eyes was interesting she had a fond respect for him very different from the interest to roller coaster of emotions i always experienced i told you said lisa i don't know i don't know what happened frustration and fear for us bone through her it saddened me to see her so noxious but at the same time i was glad i had not gotten her involved she could not report what she don't know i cannot believe they could not have told you where they were going said my mother her words sounded flat but there were lines of worry on her face especially with your bond it only works one way said lisa sadly you know that dremit knelt down so he could be at lisa's height and look her in the eyes he pretty much had to do that to look anyone in the eye are you sure there is nothing nothing at all you can tell us there is no one in town the man at the bus station don't see them though we could pretty sure that is where they must have gone we need something anything to go on man at bus station that was another stroke of luck the woman who could sold us the tickets must have gone home her re- replacement could not know us lisa gritted her teeth and glad don't you know if i know i could tell you you don't think i'm worried about them too i have no idea where they are none and why could they even leave it does not make any sense either especially why they could go with mia of all people a twang of hurt flickered through the bond hurt at being left out whatever we are doing no matter how wrong Dremit signed and leaned back on the heels from the look on his face he obviously believed her it was always it was it was also obvious that he was worried worried in more than a professional way and seeing that concern that concern for me ate up my heart rose christian was brought me back to myself we are here i think the plaza consists of a wide open area in front of a shopping center A cafe was carved into a corner of the main building. Its tables flipping out the open area. A crowd moved in and out of the complex, busy even at the time of the day. So, how could we find them? Asked Christian. I searched. Maybe if we act like a street boy, they could try to attack us. A small, reclined smile played over his face. He don't want to admit it, but he could. Thought my joke was funny. He and I went inside like my mo- like any mall it was filled with familiar chains and a selfish part of me thought that maybe if we found the group soon enough we could still get in shopping time Christian and I walked the length of it twice and saw no signs of our friends or anything resemble channels maybe we are in the wrong place I finally said or maybe they are suggested Christian they could have gone to some other Finch. He pointed, and I followed the gesture. The three re- Regan girls sat at a table in the middle of the food court, looking dejected. They looked so miserable. I almost felt sorry for them. I could kill for a camera right now," said Christian, smirking. "This is not funny." I told him, striding towards the group. Inside, I breathed a sigh of relief. The group clearly had not found any Strigoi. We are still alive, and could maybe. taken back before we get in even more trouble they don't notice me until i was almost right next to them eid her joked up rios what are you doing here are you out of your mind a eid a few people nearby gave us a surprised look do you know how much trouble you are in how much trouble you have gotten us in how the hell you find us asked manson in a low voice glancing anxiously around you guys are not exactly criminal masterminds i told them your information at the bus station gave you away that and i figured 
out that you could not want to go off on your pointless trigoy hunting quest the look manson gave me relieved he still was not entirely happy with me it was mia who replied however it is not pointless huh i demanded do you kill any trigoy did you even find any no admitted eat good i said you got lucky why are you so against killing trigoy asked mia hotly is not that what you trying for i trying for same mission not childish stunts like this it is not childish she cried they kill my mother and the guardians were not doing anything even their information is bad there were not any strigoi in the tunnels probably none in the whole city christian looked impressed you found the tunnels yeah said it but like she said they were useless we should see them before we go christian told me it is be kind of cool and if the data was bad there is no danger no i snapped we are going home now manson looked tired we are going to search the city again even you cannot make us go back rose no but the school's guardians can when i call and tell them you are here call it blackmailing or being a tattle tale the effect was the same the three of them looked at me like i had just simultaneously gut punched them all you really do that asked manson you could sell us out like that i rubbed my eyes wondering despite me why i was trying to be the voice of reason here that was the girl who could run away from school manson had been right i had changed this is not about selling anyone out this is about keeping you guys alive you think we are that defenseless asked mia you think we could kill them right away yes i said unless you have found some way to use water as a weapon she flushed and don't say anything we have bought silver sticks said it fantastic they must have stolen them i looked at manson pleadingly manson please call this off let's go home he looked at me for a long time finally he signed okay even me i look as that but manson had assumed a leadership role with them and they don't have the in- initiative to go on without him maya seems to take it the hardest and i felt bad for her she could barely had any real time to grieve for her mother she could just jumped right on the board with this vengeance things as a way to cope with the pain she could have a lot to deal with when we got back Christian was still excited about the idea of the underground tunnels considering he spent all his time in attic i should not have spent i should not been all surprised i saw the shadow he told me we have got a while before the next bus we cannot go walking into some strigoi liar i argued walking towards the mall entrance there is no strigoi there said manson it is seriously all jaint of stuff there was no signs of anything weird i really do think the guardians had bad information rules said christian let's get something fun out of this they all looked at me i feel like a mom who could buy her kids candy at the grocery store okay fine It's just a peek though the others lead christian and me to the opposite end of the mall through a door marked staff only we dogged a couple of jenders that slipped through the another door that led us to a set of stairs going down i had a brief moment of do you are recalling the steps down to adrian's spa party other only that stairs were dirty and smelled pretty nasty we reached the bottom it was so much a tunnel a narrow corridor lined a in grimed caked cement ugly fluorescent light were embroidered perfectly along the walls the passenger went off to our left and right boxes of ordinary cleaning and electrical supplies sat around see said manson boring i pointed in each direction what is down there nothing signed mia we will show you 
we walked down the right and found more of the same. I was starting to agree with the boring assignment when we passed some black writing on the walls. I stopped and looked at it. It was a list of letters. D. B. C. O. T. D. V. L. D. Is that yes, I some had lines and X marks next to them, but for the most part of the message was incoherent. Mia noticed masculinity. It is probably a gender thing, she said, or maybe some gang did it. Probably, I said, still studying it. The others shifted restlessly, not understanding my fascination with the jumbles of letters. I don't understand my fascination either, but something in my head tugged at me and say, Then I got it. B for Badika. Is it for Zalux? I for Aishwa. I started. The first letter of every royal family names was there. There was three D names, but based on the order, you could actually read the list as a size ranking. It started with the smaller families Dragomorai, Badika, Kanta, and went all the way up to the giant Ashwa clan. I don't understand the dashes, the lines beside the letters, but I quickly noticed the names had an X based them Badika and Droswa. I stepped back from the wall. We have to get out of here. I said, my voice scared me a little right now. The others looked at me in surprise. Why? Asked Eid. What is going on? I will tell you later. We just need to go. Manson pointed in the direction we could be heading. This lets out a few blocks away. It is closer to the station. I peed down in the dark unknown. No. I said, we are going back the way we came. They all looked at me like I was incensed as we retreated our steps. But nobody questioned me yet. When we emerged from the male's front, I breathed a sign of relief to see that the sun was still out, though it was steadily sinking into the horizon and casting orange and red light into the buildings. The remaining light could still be enough for us to get back to the bus station before we were really in any danger of seeing Strigoi. And I know now that there really were Strigoi in Spokane. Drimut's information has been correct. I don't know what the list meant, but I clearly had something to do with the attacks. I needed to report it to the other guardians immediately, and I certainly could not tell the others what I could realize until we were safely at the lodge. Manson was likely to go into the tunnels if he knew what I did. Most of our walk back to the station proceed in silence. I think my mood had gowed, covered the others. Every even Christian seems to have run out of the snit comments. Inside, my emotions whirled occasionally between anger and guilt as I kept re-examining my role in everything. Ahead of me, he stopped walking and I nearly ran to him. He looked around. Where are we? Snapping out of my thoughts, I surveyed the area too. I don't remember these buildings. Damn. I exclaimed. Are we lost? Don't anyone keep track of which way we went? It was unfair question since I clearly has not paid attention either. But my temper had pushed me past reason. Manson studied me for a few moments, then pointed this way. We turned and walked down a narrow street between two buildings. I don't think we were going the right way, but I don't really have any better idea. I also don't want to stand around debating. We don't. <coughs> We have not gone very far when I heard the sound of an engine and squealing tires. Mia was walking in the middle of the road and protective conditioning kicked in before I even saw what was coming. Grabbing her, I jerked her out of the street and pulled against one of the building walls. The boys had done the same. <clears throat> a large grey van with tin windows had rounded the corner and was headed in our direction. We pressed the flat against the wall, waiting for it to go past. Only it doped. Screeching to a halt, it stopped right in front of us and the door slid open. Three big guys slipped out and again my instincts kicked in. I had no clue who they were or what they wanted. 
but they clearly were not friendly. That was all I needed to know. One of them moved towards Christian and I struck out and punched him. The guy barely struck out but was clearly surprised to have felt it all, I think. <clears throat> he probably had not expected someone as small as me to be a much of a threat. Ignoring Christian, he moved towards me. In my peripheral vision, in my peripheral vision, I saw Manson and Eat squaring off with the two other two. Manson had actually pulled out his stolen silver strap. Mia and Christian stood there frozen. Our attackers, our attackers were relaying a lot on bulk. They don't have the sort of background we had in offensive and defensive techniques. Plus, they were humans, and we had tamper strength. Unfortunately, we also had a disadvantage of being cornered against the wall. We had nowhere to retreat to. Most importantly, we had something to lose, like Mia. The guy who could been sparring with Manson seems to realize this. He had backed off from Manson and instead grabbed her. I barely saw the flash of his gun before his barrel was pressed against her neck. Backing off from my own adversary, I yelled at it to stop. We could have all been trying to respond instantly to those kinds of orders and he halted his attack, a glancing at my questioningly when he saw Mia. His face went pale. I wanted nothing more than to keep plumping these men, whoever they were, but I could not risk this guy hurting Mia. He knew her too. He don't even have to make the threat. He was human, but he knew enough about us to know we could go out of our way to protect the morale. non boys had a saying grilled into us from the early age. Only they matter. <clears throat> Everyone stopped and looked between him and me. Apparently, we were acknowledged leaders here. What do you want? I asked harshly. The guy pressed his gun closer to Mia neck and she whimpered. For all her talk about fighting, she was smaller than me and not really as strong, and she was too terrified to move. The man inclined his head towards the van's open door. I want you to get inside and don't say anything. You do, and she is gone. I looked at Mia, the van, my other friends, and the back of the guy. Shit!